Hey guys, I am so excited to get this video out to you. This is a video that has been in the works really since Midwest Audio Fest. At Midwest Audio Fest, I was able to meet Kirby Meets Audio, who is just a really good guy and a really talented builder. If you guys want to take a look at his channel, check the link down in the description below. And you're gonna to wanna to check it out no matter what because I'm gonna be talking about the crossover design on this particular build and he's gonna do the final build itself and you're gonna to wanna to see that it is really, really nice. So let me go ahead and talk to you a little bit about the crossover, but in order to do that, we need to get on the computer. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right guys, whenever you design a crossover, you need to have goals. I had four main goals from picking the components and picking the crossover. So let's go ahead and talk about those. The first was a very wide soundstage. I wanted to make sure that I had a soundstage you could put these speakers in and it would have what you would consider room filling sound. Now in order to do that, you need fairly decent sized drivers. And really the bigger the driver you can get, the better the low end you're going to get. Unfortunately, because of a concept called beaming, the bigger the speaker is, the sooner you have to cross it over. So in order to kind of show you what we're talking about, I'm going to get on Parts Express website and show you some of the frequency response graphs of these speakers. Now this is the RS180S-8. This is the seven inch reference series woofer that we decided to use. If you notice this particular frequency graph, you can see that it shows a zero degree, 15, 30, and 45 degree off axis responses. Now all those responses are merged into one till right about 1K. At 1K, they're gonna start to separate. That means at that particular time, you're going to have a really good off axis response and should hopefully get a room filling sound assuming your speaker's big enough. Now, if you continue to look, you're going to see that these really start to separate after 2K. So that means for me, I want to cross over before 2K to maintain that room filling sound. So the next process is of course, picking out a tweeter that can cross over that low. And guys, there's not a lot of tweeters that can do that, at least not without adding distortion. So the tweeter that was picked was the RST28F-4, which is Dayton Audio's new reference tweeter. And it can cross over as low as 1.4 kilohertz. So we know that we can cross over now between 1.4 and 2K and hopefully still maintain that room filling sound that we're looking for. Now the second goal I had is I wanted this to be a speaker that could be easy to listen to. For those of you who design and build speakers or have listened to a lot of speakers, you're gonna know that some speakers that you listen to get fatiguing to listen to after a while. Or maybe something will come out on screen and it'll really hurt your ears. Well guys, that's because there's a certain frequency range and typically between 1K to 5K that our ears are very sensitive to. Now what some people will do is they'll actually EQ that part down. What I decided to do is take care of that in the crossover itself. And so I wanted between one and 5K to be just a little bit softer than the rest of it. Now the third thing, of course, I wanted to be full range. So in order to do that, you need to pick a woofer that can go low enough or have low enough extension. Now, if we take a look at the RS180-4, you can see that if you put this in a one cubic vented volume, you can get all the way down to 33 Hertz. Guys, that's good enough for a full range speaker. You're gonna have everywhere between 30 Hertz to 20 kilohertz and you could run these speakers alone without having to worry about running a subwoofer which makes these great choice for like a living room or an apartment now finally guys the goal was to pick some components that would have a simple crossover something that you guys could design and build yourselves that doesn't have a lot of complicated networks and hopefully keep the cost down. With these particular drivers, I was able to do that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the crossover. I know you've been anticipating this. So if we look at XSIM, this is the final crossover of this particular build. If you notice, what we did is we put a third order crossover on the tweeter. That's because I decided to cross this over at 1.8 kilohertz. And I did have to do a third order to protect the tweeter and of course keep down distortion on the tweeter end. But we also chose that 1.8 because it was in the frequency range between one and two K, which is what we wanted for that wide sound stage. 
Now, the Wolfer's what really surprised me. If you notice the Wolfer, we actually only did a second order crossover. There was no Zobel or nothing. I thought for sure we were going to need a Zobel. Uh, that was my concern, but we really didn't. We actually ended up not needing a Zobel at all on it. So I know you guys want to know what the actual final frequency response is. So let's go ahead and take a look at this now. So this is the final frequency response. As you can tell that we had a very nice response at the end. We did meet our goal between one to five K bringing it down just a little. If you did want to bring this part up a little, you could by lowering the resistor some. I like it down just a little on the top end. That's completely up to you. So what was the result of all this? The result was a very clean speaker. I set these up in my living room, like you can see here, and I have them running just two channel stereo to be able to watch movies and TV shows, and they do a very good job on them. Even music, when you put it on, it just fills that room which is so nice to have instead of having to worry about speakers everywhere, especially in our living room. My wife doesn't want five or seven speakers around our living room. Theater room, she doesn't care. Living room, she's a little bit more cautious about what we put in there. I was very impressed with them and I think for the price, which is right around 270 bucks, this comes out fantastic and in that price range, there's nothing that I know of that you can go out to the store and buy that would beat this type of performance. I think you would be very happy with this build if you decided to build it. So guys, I would definitely encourage anyone that wants to build something that is on a tight budget to build something like this. It is a really nice setup. If you have any questions or concerns, please leave them in the description down below. I always check those. They may notice the videos a little bit longer. Why? Well, because I wanted to make sure that you had a little bit of relaxation before you left. And because of that, I'm gonna go ahead and play a little bit of a video of me soldering the crossover together. That way you can actually see the crossover as well. Thanks guys and have a great day.